It's your man, Jay Gray's report, and welcome to the College Football Weekly Preview, Week 6, presented by your good neighbor, State Farm agent, Ravi R. Murray, located 3955 Eagle Creek Parkway, Indianapolis, or hit your boy up at 297-3804. Y'all know how we get it in, so let's get it in. Now, this weekend had your boy Doug. I missed about three ball games this weekend, but that's the beauty in college football. You can never call it. You can never tell it. So, now, let's move on to the first ball game. Now, we go down to the ACC. We had number 25, Virginia Tech, goes out to play number 17, North Carolina. Now, Virginia Tech wins this ball game 34 to 3. <laughs> Who cares about this ball game? <laughs> Nobody cares about this ball game, bro. It's, both these teams going to be at the bottom of the barrel in the ACC at the end of the day. I don't care what you say. Who cares about the ACC? Only team in the ACC look like anything is Florida State <laughs> or Miami, and both of them does <laughs> suspect. Now, let's move on to the next ball game. Let's go to the real ball game. We go down to number one, Alabama. Play goes down to Arkansas, to Fayetteville, to play number 16, Arkansas. Now, I had Alabama pick to win this ball game. I don't know why all these boys was – shivering in their boots and worrying about what Jalen Hurts, the true freshman, was going to be able to do. Alabama wins this ball game 49-30. Jalen Hurts came in town, kept it composed. He was efficient. He went 13-17, put up 253 yards, threw two touchdowns, a dub pick, rushed for another two touchdowns. This dude accounted for four touchdowns. Remember, bro, he a true freshman, and everybody worrying about it. Alabama established the run game early. These boys put up 264 yards on the ground. Damian Harris was 13 carries, 122 yards. I mean, hey, they putting in work. Then you have my man Adarius Stewart go to work five catches, 120 yards. Don't worry about Alabama. Alabama going to be fine because you got Doug Nick Saban on the sideline. And he going he to holler and cuss anybody out that ain't doing what he trying to do. <laughs> Even the offensive coordinator, Lane Kiffin, ain't even safe around this boy. He might just, but you got to watch him. Got to keep a pillow behind him because he just might pass out on the sideline. You know, he gets so mad, he take his head get off and start screaming. <laughs> hey, but that's why they win in national championship because this boy is intense. And he going to tell you, there's a process involved. And if you get in the way of the process, you going to be done. Now, let's move on to the next ball game. We got number nine. Tennessee goes down to number eight, Texas A&M, down to Cal Field. Now, I told you boys going into this ball game, Tennessee was going to be dull because they always come out, start off slow, and then come back, roar back, get back in the ball game. Down at Cal Field, that wasn't going to happen. Texas A&M win this ball game 48, 30, uh, 45-38 in double overtime. Now, I will say, if you want to show your young team how not to give up, put film a, a Tennessee old, because these boys going to play 60 minutes. <laughs> I know Bush Jones, Bush Jones got the bubble guts again this weekend. <laughs> you can't keep having boys come out here playing slow in the first half. They were down 21-7 to in the first half. You knew they were coming back because that's the nature of their ball club. They keep coming back. But you cannot win ball game. They turn the ball over seven times, bro. Seven times. You can't win. I don't care how, what, what kind of attitude you got, what type of stick to you got. You can't win ball game, turn the ball over seven times. Now, they got, into, they got into overtime, and my man Trevor Knight, the transfer from Oklahoma, goes in the second overtime, scores a one-yard touchdown. Then old Joshua Dodd. The aerospace engineer, the cat that wear two helmets because it's helmet because his brain too big. This dumb went out there and over, tried to overthink that dunk and threw the pick on the first play, a double overtime, ball game over. So now, Texas A&M is six and zero. Now remember last summer, last year, right after the season was over, everybody was talking about how Kevin Sumlin was on the hot seat because. All his quarterbacks is getting on the bus and taking off out of town. He had about three or four quarterbacks leave at the same, on the same day. <laughs> so they ain't ready, they ain't ready to run this, bro, run this brother out of town. Now, all of a sudden, 
Trevor Knight graduates early from Oklahoma, and he has still a year of eligibility, so he transfers to, to Texas A&M. Now they got a quarterback. These boys 6-0 and oh right now, bro. 6-0. and oh. So he goes from being on the high seat <laughs> to being the toast of the town right now, bro. Hey, I'm just saying, look out for Texas A&M in the SEC because Tennessee was done yesterday. Now, now they got to go back home, regroup, and play Alabama next week. Now, <clears throat> we'll talk about that one next week, but somebody get uh, Bush Jones something for the bubble guts because he's going to have it all week. <laughs> Let's move on to the next ball game. Now, we got number 23, Florida State, goes down to play number 10, Miami. Now, here's the problem. I clown Florida State because I figured Florida State was going to stumble into this joint because a few weeks ago they got blasted by Louisville. Then that Duns got beat at a last-second field goal against old Dud, North Carolina. So I figured they was going to stumble in here and fall apart. But they surprised you, boy. They beat Miami. 20 to 19, I clown these boys before the, before the game. I said they need to go find Deion Sanders, Derek Brooks, <laughs> famous Jameis, <laughs> all kind of boy. Anybody that ever played <laughs> Lee Corso, <laughs> find everybody that, could, that ever played for Florida State to go in there and get these boys a pep talk. Because, but they came out and did work. Now, I will say, I don't know if y'all caught Miami tried to hurt. DeAndre Francois, <clears throat> the ghetto Frenchman, you begin of the game, you see the Dunn put him in a headlock and then roll over on him like they was in MMA, <coughs> some MMA. What was, I mean, and I don't understand how the kid didn't get kicked out of the game for that foolishness. I mean, he literally tried to break this boy's neck. And, and so the, the ghetto Frenchman was out for a while. They had him under the tent trying to reconstruct him, get him together. Then that boy came out and went to work. Had 234 yards, two touchdowns. And they put up 161 yards, 67 yards rushing as a team. Florida State got their mojo back. Beat these boys. Blocked an uh, uh, extra point at the end of the ball game with about a minute 30 left. Wins this ball game. And, and, and now they got bragging rights. This is the seventh straight win over Miami. <coughs> now we're going to start saying Miami is Mark Rick's Miami. <laughs> Can't win the big games, bro. He walk in the door. They undefeated, ready to roll, got the swagger back. They had the old school Miami uniforms back. They were ready to go. Then they get out there and go dull on the boy and get a doggone field goal block. I mean, get the extra point block. <laughs> hey, last night after the ball game, it was breaking news. Chief Osceola gets arrested in the parking lot for beating up Sebastian the Ibis. <laughs> Sebastian out there still talking trash. Ball game over. I see Ola trying to go to the ride. Got his girl with him. This done still out there talking trash. So, so I see Ola get out the ride, get into a huge fight with this boy, break his nose. Now Sebastian laying up in uh, ICU. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next ball game. Now we got Texas goes down to the Cotton Pro Bowl to play number twenty Oklahoma. Now. I picked Texas to win this ball game because I figured they was going to play hard for Charlie Strong. Oklahoma typically wets the bed in ball games like this because for some strange reason, it just that's just the way it goes. But OU wins this ball game 45 to 40. Now, Shane Boucher, that's Bobby Boucher, great nephew. That done came out there and went to work yesterday too. Neither one of these defenses showed up. Bobby... Shane Bouchel had 245 yards, three touchdowns, and threw a dub pick. But my man Baker Mayfield went to work, had over 390 yards, three touchdowns. He threw two dub picks, but one of the picks wasn't his fault. Then you had D.D. Westbrook sets an Oklahoma school record, uh, 10 catches, 232 yards. Oklahoma rushed the ball. They had 282 yards on the ground. Samaj P. Ryan was a workhorse. 35 carries, 214 yards. Hey, Oklahoma, if Oklahoma plays like this every week, they'd be all right. But next week, they're going to be out there. They're going to go down on a boy and, and just fall apart. That's just the way it go. I don't know what Bob Stoops feeding these boys or teaching these boys, but you don't know what you're going to get when they show up. Now, the problem I got, 
with all these dimes now, everybody's hollering and screaming that Charlie Strong should be fired. He only been there two and a half years, bruh. He had not even got all his players in yet. See, what, what a lot of cats don't realize is Mac Brown stuck around about three years too long. So how do you think that this, this boy is going to come in there in two years and turn the program around completely? It's not going to happen, bruh. So give this man some time. You know, and, and let him do his thing. <clears throat> and then we gonna we gonna, we gotta get Bebo out of the out of the Buick. That done got caught last night, <laughs> got pulled over last night, couldn't get out the Buick. <laughs> couldn't get out the Buick, bro. They had to they had to take the car and him to the police station. He in the car. They had to just tow the joint. Hey, it's your man Jay Graves Report from the jgravesreport.com. Or you can hit me up on Twitter at Graves Report so you can holler at your boy. And always remember that this segment is presented by your good neighbor, State Farm agent, Ravi R. Murray. Located 3955 Eagle Creek Parkway, Indianapolis. Or hit your boy up at 317-297-3804 so you can holler at your boy.